So, Enrique, <laughs> how are you? We got some great news today. Uh, Carlos Rodon signs with the Yankees for six years, 162. Uh, I absolutely love the deal. I think it's perfect for Rodon and I think for the Yankees as well. How are you feeling with the move? Brother, I'm ecstatic. Uh, I feel like this was a move that needed to be made. I know we spoke off air with our colleague, Alex, who called it a luxury more than a necessity. I don't fully agree. As we've seen in history, you can't get too far in the postseason when you have to rely on one guy. Most successful World Series caliber teams in the past have always had two aces or a true ace and a and a solid number two right behind them. We've lacked that for a while now. We've had to depend solely on Garrett Cole for a long time. You know, we've had to depend on him to be our horse. Um, you know, Aaron Judge's own words. He said, this guy's a horse. We need to get him some help because it's not fair that he has to do it all on his own. Well, that help came today in the form of Carlos Rodon. I, I couldn't be happier. I feel like Garrett got his right-hand man as far as uh, the two top aces of the rotation. And, you know, this reminds me of uh, when Houston had Verlander and Cole. You know what I'm saying? You knew that when you were going up against Houston, if you were facing the top of their rotation, you had to steal at least one game. Because if you lost both first games of the series to Cole and Verlander, you were out of luck. You know what I'm saying? And that's the situation that now I feel with this move, we've put the rest of the AL in. Now in a, in a five-game set, you know, say we're going against whatever team comes out of the wild card, they have to win three games when literally the first two games are against Garrett Cole and Carlos Rodon. Pretty tall task, Sean, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, I think it's even uh, beyond that. Uh, I think our, our rotation is top three in baseball. Um, you know, Garrett Cole obviously still at the top. You got Carlos Rodon now at number two. You can make the case either whether it's going to be Nestor or Severino at three to kind of balance out that righty-lefty, righty-lefty. So you could have Severino at three. You can now have uh, 2022 All-Star Nestor Cortez, your favorite player in history. <laughs> that like to mess with you a little bit. At, at, if you have Nestor at number four, I don't think you could have asked for better. And then to have Frankie Montas, your big trade acquisition, last trade deadline, sitting at five with no pressure. That's a, that's a hell of a rotation. And uh, that's something the Yankees needed to absolutely have. Yeah, it's a little bit of a luxury, but... I think um, there's still a lot of moves to be made. I definitely don't Absolutely. think this is the end. I don't think this is anywhere near the end. I think this is just something that, you know, when you look at the teams that you're, you're competing against against the World Series, you have to compare yourself to the ones that juggernaut of the world. Yes, it is Houston. And Houston, even though they lost Verlander to the Mets, the Astros still have six starters who are top guys who are still going to be a great team, a really tough out. And if you bring out this rotation to go against Houston, if you bring the bats, as of right now on paper, this rotation is good enough to battle against Houston. 